Hey everyone, so in this video I wanted to do two things. One, a quick catch up, no pun intended, about what I've added to this. Obviously visually it looks substantially different. And then two, the idea that I have that might be the hook for this. And as an afterthought, how I keep getting into the same trap over and over again that I've discussed. So first of all, yes, this looks at least different. Uh, I'd like to think that it looks better because it's not just this void where you're in the... Uh, you're in the diner at the end of the universe that you are actually in a building. And there's a little bit of an environment in the background as far as it's snowing currently because it's winter. Anyways, so now it looks more like a proper cafe. I didn't I didn't do this on video because it's just drag and drop. All I did was buy a, another asset pack. It is the coffee shop asset pack. And it's just a matter of going into the prefabs and dragging and dropping, rotating, scaling. You guys know how to do that. I certainly don't want to waste your time with you watching me do that. Uh, there's plenty of like Minecraft videos if you want to see people build things. Um, I've watched those some myself because it can be very relaxing. But I didn't think from a tutorial point of view you guys would get anything out of that. It's just me dragging and dropping. So that's the visual upgrade and that's what's being used now for the thumbnail. So there's that. Second of all, a few more things. When you put the burgers on the grill, as you notice, the grill has moved. It used to be that frying pan over here. I now have a proper stove. And so that was really the only coating that I had to change for this upgrade. Is since I moved the stove, I had to move the position in which it would instantiate the hamburger. That's like one constant that had to be changed. So you're talking, you know, five seconds of coding. So the visual assets did not impact the code whatsoever. The only reason why this did is because I actually moved the location. If the grill was up here, I wouldn't have had to change the code. Okay, so let's look at the placement of the meat now. And also the the bacon now moves too. So if you click on the hamburger, you now have a particle system indicating that it's cooking. So it's something you've got a little bit of animation. And then what will happen is this will go away. And then this is fully cooked. Now that's something that probably should still be added is that this could be burned. So you would just put that there. And now the bacon cooks. It too has steam, a little bit of smoke, whatever you want to call it. And then it too can be moved and you can just put the bun and you serve it. So the only code thing that had to be changed, like I said, was the position that the, this gets placed on. Also, I had to put the meat script that was on this onto this as well. So it, was, it would have that similar functionality of moving to the grill and having a cooking subroutine rather than moving directly to the plate. Obviously, I also upgraded. I put more plates here. Well, not plates, but more serving dishes here. And I also added tomato and lettuce. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the hook, the idea of what I could do with this. And it's, an, it, it's basically combining pre-existing genres. Now, I have made no secret that I am a big fan of turn-based uh, turn RPGs. Okay, uh, The old school Dragon Quest... Uh, the old school Final Fantasy before it became the button mashing stuff that it is now. No offense, if you enjoy those games, that's great. I'm glad you enjoy them, but it's it's not what I grew up with. I'm a, I'm a bit of a stick in the mud about that, that I really like the strategic turn-based elements of it. But one of the fun parts was always the maxing out of stats. How do you get more health? How do you get more armor? How do you get more MP and things like that? So the idea was that when the, the customer serve that you would serve in this would all be heroes from RPGs. Obviously, I can't use anything that is pre-existing IP, so I can't use characters that are owned by Square Enix or anything like that, but I can use archetypes, like warriors would come in, uh, mages would come in, uh, rogues would come in, things like that, and the food that you serve them would have different stats. So rather than them being able to order whatever they feel like, because what I did originally was just come up with every possible combination, instead, between days or between weeks, whatever, you would create a new menu item, and that menu item would have certain stats. So right now, all these have a dollar amount associated with them, and they all have a food value for the purposes of comparison. 
But imagine adding another uh, attribute to them, and that is some kind of HP, uh, some kind of RPG stat. So maybe this gives you 20 more HP, or maybe this gives you more MP, or this gives you resistance to um, uh, to, to poison, or you know, carrots gives you better accuracy because it affects your eyesight. Although, to the best of my knowledge, carrots only affect your night vision. So things like that, and then it would add this RPG element. So for people who really aren't into cooking, but are into that kind of min and maxing of attributes, I think that might make it more interesting. So the the customers would all be fantasy based, and you know if you really want to go off on a tangent, maybe even villains show up. You know, a boss shows up is like, oh my goodness, there's a raid coming in. All these people are are, are coming after me. I'm going to need poison resistance. I'm going to need uh, uh go to need you know max HP and and things like that. So each ingredient would have some kind of RPG element to it, and like I said, maybe once a week. Uh, obviously in game not really once a week but like in game weeks maybe a day lasts 30 minutes uh something like that or maybe a day lasts 15 minutes and then you know every after every five days uh you can then add a new menu item and the idea is that people won't show up until you have menu items that are meaningful to them so at first you'd only say maybe have these okay but then when you start adding things like this to the menu, suddenly it brings in uh, additional clientele. So once you, if if your if the sandwiches that you offer only offer say physical defense, well, majors aren't going to show up for that. So you would instead have, like I said, other uh, ingredients that would help with those additional stats. And so I think that might scratch that itch for certain people, that, that RPG element. And certainly having an RPG vendor is not an original idea. It's been done for years. The first one that I can think of, at least any kind of major release, I think it was derivative of, was it Dragon Quest Three? where there was a vendor you could play as briefly and then they did an offshoot where it was him running his own store more recently although still quite a few years ago there was uh Rasseteer, which was had was a two part uh two parts to the game one part was a dungeon crawl and then the other part was running the store where you would sell those items that you got on the dungeon crawl so Certainly the basic idea is not new, but maybe this is a spin that hasn't been quite done yet because, like I said, this has taken the more modern like hot dog, hot shot, and games like that approach where it's almost not – I wouldn't quite call it a first-person perspective, but you're basically – in uh, the shoes of the person who is assembling the food, the cook, and then giving it to the customers. So let me know what you think. And uh, the last thing I want to mention is this is the kind of pattern that I've mentioned in the past where I come up with a very simple game, a very simple gameplay loop. And then once I do that, I say, you know something, it's not enough because this has already been done before. And then it becomes much, much bigger. But I do think that I could make this work. Whether anyone wants it or not, who knows? But I do think that I could make this work. There's certainly enough assets in the Unity store that I could purchase. Maybe I could do like an early access to finance it. I'm not really big on early access because somebody, in in my opinion, it's really been abused. But if I give enough content to begin with, maybe it would justify an early access and make it clear that any revenue that I got would be used to purchase additional assets that would kind of swap out the placeholder assets. So I think that's just about it. So uh, I hope you found this interesting. And again, leave a comment or a like if you like this idea. Or if you don't like the idea, feel free to do a thumbs down. Interaction is still interaction. And please do enjoy the rest of your day.